So the first thing you're going to want to do is find a variety of pictures that you want to use. I'm looking at the double exposure project. So the whole idea of double exposure is that you're putting one picture on top of another. Where we get the term double exposure from is originally in a film camera, you would take one picture and not slide the film forward and then take another picture on that same bit of film so it would show both of the pictures at the same time layered on top of each other so we're trying to kind of simulate that process but using digital means instead of a film camera so i'm going to start by finding a variety of pictures that I want to use. I'm going to use Flickr.com. I don't know for sure if the district internet lets you use Flickr. I know in the past it's been one of the better sources that the district actually allows you to use. So if you can get on Flickr, it's a good site to start with. I'm going to start by looking up a portrait and I'm going to switch the license for the photo to all Creative Commons. What that means is whoever took the photo and uploaded it says it's okay for you to use for anything you would like. So I'm going to choose a picture of a person to start with. Then if you're using Flickr, down on the bottom right hand corner, you'll see a download button. You want to download the original size. And then when that file pops up that it's downloading, make sure that you're showing the file in the folder and dragging that from the downloads into your Google Drive. I know a lot of you have had issues in the last couple weeks with your Chromebooks deleting the downloads. So please make sure anything that you're downloading that you want to be there later, you are saving that into your Google Drive and not just leaving it on your downloads. So again, I click that I want to show in the folder. Then I go into my Google Drive. Yours will look a little bit different from mine. And then you should be able to just click and drag the picture file into the folder. And I can come back to Flickr and choose another photo. Let's say Chicago Skyline. Go down to that download button and remember you're downloading the original so that it's the highest quality picture you can get. Showing that picture in the folder and you're going to drag that into your folder for this class period on your Google Drive. If you don't put it on your Google Drive, don't expect it to be there in the future. I'm also going to download a few different Skyline pictures because I don't know which one is going to work the best yet. So make sure you're giving yourself a few different options and not necessarily going with the first picture that you find. So now that I have at least a few pictures to choose from to start building my design, I'm going to go back over to Pixlr. Instead of opening an image, this time I'm going to click Create New. I'm 
name your file so that you can find it in the future. Make sure you have the background turned off. And then depending on if you want your picture to be wide or tall, you're going to change this width and this height. So 1920 by 1080 is probably what will come up automatically in the program. That's going to be a standard television size. If you don't know exactly what you want for size, you can always leave it that size and change it later. Then you click create and you'll see you have a blank page with no background that is about the same ratio as a TV. Then on your layers panel, you're going to go to the plus button and then click image and pick your first picture that you want in your design. Click open and make sure when this comes up that you're resizing it to fit in the box where you want it to be. I know that in my final design, I'm not going to want the background in my picture. I'm going to change it to a different background. So the first step that I'm going to do is actually removing the background from my picture. Remember, you can remove parts of your picture with the scissors tool. If you click on the scissors tool and you don't see the different um, tools up at the top and it doesn't let you click and erase any of your picture, make sure over here on the layers panel that you have the image layer that you want to be erasing from selected. If you see, once I clicked on that layer, now all of the different tools are available up along the top. I'm gonna set my feather to a low number. And then today I think I'm going to use the lasso mask tool to work on removing the background from this picture. Remember to be as detailed as possible as you're removing the background. And if you make a mistake, you can always flip back to add to mask up at the top. And then if you circle an area, it will show up green and that will add the picture back in. Are there any questions so far? Make sure to save it that you're going up to file, down to save, and then every time you save your picture while you're still working on it, you need to click this PXD file format. That will save the different layers over here in your layers panel. If you forget to switch it to the PXD, it will just save it as one flat layer. And especially as you start getting better with the program and adding more and more layers, make sure that you're saving it as this PXD format so that you keep all those layers from day to day when you're working. Then you're going to click download and the same way we saved the pictures onto Google Drive, make sure you're saving your photo that you're working on onto Google Drive every time. So I'm going to click the little arrow, show in folder, and make sure that I drag this PXD document that downloaded into the folder for this class on your Google Drive. Again, the Chromebooks delete your downloads occasionally, 
And also, Pixlr hasn't always been saving students' work. So please make sure every day that you're saving it to your Google Drive so that you don't have to redo work ever.